Yes, it's Maxwell House Coffee Time, starring George Burns and Gracie Allen. With yours truly, Bill Goodwin, the music of Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, B. Benaderet, Elvia Allman, and Verna Phelps. For your Thursday night comedy enjoyment, it's George and Gracie. And for your everyday coffee drinking enjoyment, it's Maxwell House. The coffee that gives you so much more for so little more that is bought and enjoyed by more people than any other brand of coffee in the world. Yes, Maxwell House. Expertly blended and radiant roasted for rich, mellow, extra flavor. Maxwell House. The coffee that's always good to the last drop. Well, last Thursday, Gracie had a brainstorm. She read that Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer planned to make a picture version of that best-selling book, The Hucksters. And since the book is all about radio, Gracie reasoned that George would be a natural for the lead. However, as George pointed out last Thursday... Honey... Clark Gable is set for the picture. Oh, but that's ridiculous when they can get you. Why, you can out Gable Gable with one ear tied behind you. <laughs> well, Gable is the lead and that's that. Well, he won't be the lead when I'm through. Goodbye. Where are you going? Well, I'm going to MGM and tell him to get the lead out. <laughs> Gracie, relax. Why are you so set on me doing the picture? Well, because the Hucksters is a story of the radio business, and you practically started radio. Oh, honey. It's natural casting. If they were making a picture about the automobile business, they'd get a fellow who started that. Glenn Ford. <laughs> oh, yes, uh, Henry's father. Yes. If they were making a picture about the washing machine business, they'd get William Bendix. <laughs> Gracie If they made a picture about the perfume business They'd get a man who invented cologne And that would be Gary Cologne, cologne yeah. <laughs> Well, I didn't invent radio So just forget the whole thing But Gracie didn't forget it Friday, she brought the subject up again This time, she tried flattery You know, George... You look remarkably like Clark Gable. Gracie, be sensible. Gable stands six feet four. How tall are you? Five feet six. You got a quibble over a fraction of a foot? <laughs> Forget it. And besides, what if he is a little taller? You're built exactly like him. I am? Exactly. You have two feet. Two legs. Gracie. Two arms. Gracie. Two eyes. That's enough. Two heads. What? I mean, one head. Uh, look, I've had enough. I don't want to hear any more about this. Oh, I know what's stopping you from doing the Hucksters. You're afraid Clark will feel bad if you take his job. Oh, sure, sure, sure. That's it. Well, while you're making the picture, let him do our radio show. Clark Gable would be scared to death in front of a microphone. He'd probably have to stand with his arm around you to hold himself up. That would be pretty tough on you. <laughs> <laughs> You're cute. Well, let's forget it. Now, let's not bring the subject up again. However, on Saturday, Gracie managed to bring it up again. Oh, not directly. This time, she led into it ever so subtly. Chilly this morning, isn't it, George? Yeah. Speaking of the Hucksters, why Gracie, don't you do that? I told you to forget that. Well, darling, if you'd only decide whether you want to make the picture or not and stop beating around the bush. I did. The answer is no. N-O, no. Nine. Nix. <laughs> Nothing doing. And that's final. Can't decide, huh? Can't make a decision. <laughs> Well, Gracie realized that George had reached the limit of his patience, so for the last five days there's been no mention of Clark Gable. But Gracie's still scheming. We find her now discussing her scheme with a famous movie star, a star who, though young, has flashed to instant success due to his exceptional looks and talent. The movie star speaks. What's your scheme, Gracie? <laughs> Oh, 
hold a special meeting of my club, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society. Mm -hmm. And they're going to convince George that he can replace Gable. Oh, I bet you had to slip the old babes plenty to do that. Bill, the Beverly Hills Uplift Society is a cultural group of intellectual ladies interested only in the artistic development of the cinema. And I did not, as you so vulgarly put it, have to slip the old babes plenty. Oh. Four bits apiece and they jumped at it. <laughs> I see. The girls will arrive one by one and flatter, George. But you can start things rolling right now. How? Well... As you're leaving, you tell George that you're going Well, I'll be running along now, George. Thanks a lot for the cup of coffee. That's okay, Bill. Hey, you know what my girl said about you last night? What? She said you were the handsomest little devil she'd ever seen. Oh, go on. Honest. And you know what else she said? Bill, stop. Well, she said that, too. <laughs> But first she said that you reminded her of Clark Gable. That's silly. Yeah, isn't it, though? Well, I guess women look at things differently than we do. Well, so long, George. Me look like Gable. Always kidding. Still, Bill never goes out of his way to flatter me. Eh, it's ridiculous. Gable is ten inches taller than I am. Come in. Hello, it's... Uh... Oh, pardon me. I have the wrong house, Mr. Gable. Gable? No, it's, it's me, Mrs. Morton. George Burns. Bless my soul, it is. The way the light struck you there in the doorway, I could have sworn you were Clark Gable. No, it's me. Uh, <laughs> is Gracie home? Yeah, I think she's upstairs. Go in the den and sit down. Uh, thank you. What a remarkable resemblance. I simply can't believe my eyes. The way the light struck me in the doorway. Hmm. I wonder where I was standing. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but this is silly. Gable is six inches taller than I am. <laughs> Come in. Well, if you're right... Oh, I'm sorry. I must be on the wrong street. Who are you looking for, Mrs. Bagley? Why, you know my name. God. Imagine Clark Gable knowing my name. Oh, wait till I tell the girls. Goodbye, Mr. Gable. Wait a minute. Look again. It's me, George Byrne. Well, burn my sugar stamp and call me a sourpuss. <laughs> it is George Byrne. Yeah, it's the way the light strikes me here in the doorway. <laughs> you want to see Gracie? We girls are going shopping. Well, make yourself at home in the den. Gracie will be down pretty soon. Oh, all right. My, that man is a spitting image of Clark Gable. I just can't get over the resemblance. Hmm. Imagine the light here in the doorway making me look like Gable. It's amazing. Why, he's at least three inches taller than I am. <laughs> Come in. Am I late for... Uh... Oh, I beg your pardon. I thought the Burnses lived here. They do. Well, don't tell me you rent a room from them, Mr. Gable. Mrs. Gray. <laughs> this housing shortage is terrible. Mrs. Imagine a big Mrs. movie Mrs. star Mrs. like Mrs. you. Mrs. Gray. Uh, uh, I'm not Clark Gable. I'm George Burns. No. Yeah, it's a natural mistake. <laughs> we are about the same height. <laughs> believe it. It's just too much for a body. Even yours? <laughs> Where's Gracie? I must tell her about this. You can wait for him the den. But don't bother to tell her. She'll say it for herself. She certainly will. Why, I never saw anything amazing in my life. There are like of two peas in a pot. How can everyone take me for Gable? Why, he's at least an inch or two shorter than I am. <laughs> I wonder how many people will recognize that tune you're playing. Oh, it may not be familiar to the kids, Bill, but I remember it. Mm -hmm. It's called I Want to Go Back to Michigan, Down on the Farm. And when Irving Berlin wrote the song back in 1914, folks were humming it from Houston to Hackensack. 
Well, Michigan's seen many changes since those days, Meredith. A city called Detroit got to be auto capital of the whole world. And towns like Pontiac, Flint, and River Rouge became as familiar to this nation as the prize-winning fruit crops that made the Michigan farmlands famous. Yes, Michigan sure is a mighty impressive part of the American scene. Which brings to mind how Maxwell House coffee is a very real part of the American scene, too. Here in America, we love coffee. It's long been our favorite drink. And it's a fact that more people buy and enjoy Maxwell House coffee than any other brand in America at any price. Northeast, south, and west, it's Maxwell House wherever you go. Explaining this popularity story, of course, is flavor. The mellow, full-bodied Maxwell House flavor that results from the masterful blending of these choice Latin American coffees. Manizales for mellowness. Madeleines for richness. Other fine coffees for vigor. And Bucaramangas for full body. Adding up to great coffee at its flavor peak. So why not enjoy the very finest in coffee drinking pleasure? You can for just a fraction of a penny more per cup than you'd pay for the cheapest coffee sold. Just say, Maxwell House. Always good to the last drop. Girls, did you carry out my instructions? Yes, Gracie. We told your husband that he looks just like Clark Gable. Now, Gracie, you tell George he looks like Gable and it's all set. Oh, no, no. I'm using psychology. I'll tell him that he doesn't look like Gable. I don't get it. Well, last week I told him he should make the picture and he wouldn't. Now I'll tell him he shouldn't make it and he'll break his neck to do it. <laughs> Husbands are stubborn little rascals. <laughs> Maybe you've got something there. Oh, sure. You've got to let a man think everything is his own idea. Like when you marry one. The girl sends her folks to the movies, drags the man to the sofa, turns down the lights, asks him if he's ever thought of marriage, says, oh, this is so sudden, goes down and picks out the ring, leads him to the altar, and when it's all over, the man says, boy, look what I did. Gracie, <laughs> you're right. My plan will work if you girls will do a good advance job. Oh, don't worry, we did. George thinks the light in the doorway makes him look like Gable. Good, here goes. Oh, George, George, where are you? Over here, Gracie. Why, George, you've moved your easy chair into the doorway. <laughs> I like the light here. Really? Makes me look like somebody. Who? Can't you tell? Famous fella. His name begins with a G. G? General Grant? <laughs> no. I'll give you a hint. They used to build something on the outside of a house. Something I look like. A stoop? <laughs> no. A bay window. No, think. The house of the seven? Oh, oh I know. Dwarf. <laughs> it's Gable, dear. Clark Gable. Uh, I think maybe I can replace him in that picture. Picture? What picture? I'm talking about the idea you had last week. Idea? What idea? You said that I should replace Clark Gable and the Huxters. I said that? Yeah. You replaced Gable? <laughs> you? <laughs> well, what's so funny? You said I'd be much better than Gable. Oh, George, I must have been delirious. That's the silliest thing I've ever said. Now, look here. Oh, wait till Mama hears this. <laughs> she, she thinks the silliest thing I ever said was I do <laughs> What's so silly about it? Why couldn't I replace Gable? Well, aren't you a little short? Last week you said I was plenty tall Oh, I must have been dreaming Oh, fine So all last week you pulled my leg 
Oh, it didn't help. You're still too short. <laughs> oh, yeah? Well, it so happens that plenty of women think I look like Abel. I may do this picture, do this picture just to show you. Really? Yeah. Just because Gable is a little taller doesn't mean he's better. In the end, I may be bigger than he is. <laughs> uh, go back in the den. <laughs> yes, dear. <laughs> Girls, our plan is working like a charm. He went for it, hook, line, and sinker. Oh, oh good. Good. Oh, I hope you didn't discourage him too much, Gracie. Oh, don't worry. Another club member will be along in a minute and tell him he looks like Clark Gable all over again. A another club member? Who? Meredith Wilson. Oh. <laughs> uh, that's right. We did take him into the club. Well, sure, we made him an honorary woman. <laughs> But can we trust him to flatter George? Well, of course. As president of the Uplifters, I ordered him to do it. And in this organization, people do what the president says. This isn't Congress, you know. <laughs> Ooh, there's the door bus. It must be Meredith. Well, let's just settle down and wait. Come in. Come in. Oh, hello, Meredith. Why, what are you doing here, Clark Gable? <laughs> Meredith, have you uh, purchased this home, Clark Gable? Or uh, are you just visiting here, Clark Gable? <laughs> <laughs> Meredith, I'm not Clark Gable, I'm George Burns. Good heavens, can this be true? <laughs> sure, it's true. I don't really look like Gable, it's... Just the way the light strikes me. Well, you certainly look like Gable to us girls. <laughs> us girls? Yes, the uplifters. I'm an honorary woman, you know. Oh, the uplifters. Come to think of it, every woman who dropped in here today is a member of that silly club. And they all told me I looked like Gable. Oh, we're very loyal. When Gracie gives an order, we obey. <laughs> Gracie ordered them to tell me I look like Gable? That's right. Golly, if I'm not careful, I'll let the cat out of the bag. <laughs> it's already out. Darn it, there's been a leak. <laughs> yes, somebody told me. But there's no harm done, Meredith. You've convinced me that I look like Gable. Well, good. I'm a loyal uplifter, and I wouldn't want it said that I sold out to the opposite sex. You didn't. Although... At the moment, I'm a little confused as to just which sex I'm opposite. <laughs> well, go in and tell Gracie everything is fine. Gee, I'm glad. Well, Meredith, did you tell him he looked like Clark Abel? Yes, Gracie. I accomplished my mission. Oh, wonderful. By now, the little plum is ready to be plucked. I'll go out and admit that he was right and I was wrong. That he's just the man for the lead. George? Yes? George, I've been talking to the girls, and you were right. You should definitely have the lead in that picture. Picture? What picture? Well, you know, the, that idea you had a while ago. Idea? What idea? Well, you said that you should replace Clark Gable in the Huxtons. I said that? Yes. Me replace Gable? Oh. <laughs> Me? Oh. <laughs> well, what's so funny about it? You said you'd be better than Gable. Oh, Gracie, I must have been delirious. I'm too short to replace Gable. George, would you try to pull my leg? Who do you want to replace, Dietrich? <laughs> no, I mean, are you joking about this? Of course not. Anybody who thinks I could fill in for Gable is nuts. Well, I think so. There's your proof. <laughs> then you won't replace Gable? Me replace Gable? <laughs> oh, stop cackling. I'm the one who's laid the egg. You're not kidding, sister. This time, your little scheme didn't work. Blue Skies. Meredith Wilson and his chiffon music.
gone wrong. George caught on to our plan. Oh, oh that's no. Oh. I wonder if someone could have let the cat out of the bag. Oh, surely not. Well, we didn't give it away. We girls are too smart for that. We certainly are. <laughs> come say, come to think of it, everything was fine before this honorary woman came along. Who, me? I'll bet anything this jerky flute player squealed on us. <laughs> make a motion we torture the truth out of him. I second the motion. I make a motion we adjourn. Goodbye, now, all. Now, come back here. Do you know how we torture any member who betrays our club? How? We cut off her fingernails so she can't scratch. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. Oh, no. I'll wait till you take your girdle off. <laughs> Gracie, that won't work with him. He doesn't wear a girdle. Oh, that's right. Too bad he isn't George. <laughs> well, we've got to figure some way to torture him. We certainly do. do. Now, ladies, please, you're not acting like gentlemen. Hiya, girl. Oh, hello, 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 Mr. Goodwin. Hello, Mr. Goodwin. <laughs> Whoa, gee, girls, why so sad? Oh, our plan fell through, Bill. Meredith here portrayed us. What? Why, Meredith, you little worm, if you weren't a woman, I'd slug you. <laughs> We're trying to figure out some horrible torture for him. Well, he deserves it. And I know just how to make him scream with agony. Oh, oh tell us. Yes. Well, oh. first you tie him hand and foot. Yeah. And then you take some boiling water. Uh-huh. Then you make a cup of Maxwell House coffee and you don't give him any. <laughs> Boy, that's really torture because Maxwell House is the very best in coffee drinking pleasure. Yet it costs but a fraction of a penny more per cup than the cheapest coffee sold. Oh, Bill, we need a torture even worse than that. Worse than that? Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I've got it. Oh, this is really a fiendish torture. You get Betty Grable and Lana Turner over here. You put Grable in a bathing suit and Turner in a sweater. Oh, yeah. And then you tie Meredith hand and foot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Then you make another cup of Maxwell House coffee and don't give him any. <laughs> now he's screaming. You see, Meredith knows that the careful selection and blending of choice Latin American coffees, plus radiant roasting, give Maxwell House that famous flavor. In fact, it's so wonderful that it's bought by more people than any other brand of coffee at any price. Everybody knows Maxwell House is always good to the last drop. But Bill! Hmm? What are Betty Grable and Lana Turner for? Well, they're for me. I'm not being tortured. <laughs> George? What now? More tricks? No, no. I'm through with trickery. I have to admit defeat. Good. I'm sorry I used such drastic measures, George, but I honestly felt that you were the perfect lead for the Huxtons because of your radio background. Why, you were the first big star on the air. No, Rudy Valley came first. Only by a nose. <laughs> yes. You, you were the real pioneer. When radio started in New York, George Burns was there. When it moved west to Chicago, George Burns was there. When it came to Hollywood... George Burns was there. That's right. And Kilroy thinks he gets around. <laughs> but, Gracie... Why, you were in radio when the street singer didn't have a street to sing in. Gracie... I I'll bet you taught Jessica how to drag a net. <laughs> Gracie, I realize that I've got the radio background all right, but I still couldn't replace Cable. Oh, I guess you're right, George. I made a fool of myself. And the girls think so, too. They're in there right now voting me out of the club. Really? You know, I don't blame them. I've got it coming. My love for you blinded me, and I... We're I... leaving, Gracie. Yes, and we voted you out of the club. You are no longer an uplifter. That's right, and the opinion of us girls... Oh, shut up! <laughs> well, you were right to kick me out of the club, girls. I deserve it. You certainly do. Imagine saying George Burns could replace Clark Gable... Why, he couldn't fill Gable's shoes with a sand bucket and shovel. Well, Blanche, you're right. The very idea. Getting us to say this little shrimp looks like Clark Gable. Huh? He looks like Karloff with Sinatra's muscles. <laughs> well, I, I know, Clara. I lost my head. Replace Gable in a picture. He could replace Lassie in a kennel. <laughs> I 
realize that now, Margaret. He'll never be a movie star if he lives to be a hundred. Which gives him about three more days to try. <laughs> now, just a minute. I'm not oh, so... Oh, shut, shut up. up. <laughs> oh, goodbye, girls. I'm, I'm sorry I disgraced us all. Goodbye. goodbye. <laughs> Gee, they didn't have to get so tough about it. <laughs> idea of kicking you out of the club just because you think I'm as good as Gable. <laughs> well, they can't do that to my wife. I'll show him. You stop crying, honey. I'm going right over to the studio and tell him I want the lead in the hucksters. That's what I'm going to do. Wait here while I get my hat and coat. I'll teach those old crows to make my wife cry. I'll get the lead of the last thing I do. You girl, girl. Yes, lady. He fell for it hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> Join us again next week when we'll all be back. George Burns, Gracie Allen, Meredith Wilson and his orchestra, yours truly, Bill Goodwin. The George Burns and Gracie Allen Show is written by Paul Henning and Keith Fowler. Until next Thursday, good night and good luck from the makers of Maxwell House, America's number one preferred brand of coffee. All was good to the last drop. Gracie, I've changed my mind. Even though the girls did kick you out of the club, I can't go through with this. You mean that trick didn't work either? Oh, so that was just another trick. Yes, dear. You girls must think that husbands are simpletons. That husbands are goofs that can be led around by the nose. That they have no intelligence. Well, say something. Well, there's nothing left to say. You covered it. <laughs> Good night. Now stay tuned in for Noah Webster Says, which follows immediately over most of these stations. Get bird's eye. Get bird's eye spinach. Dewy, fresh, and delicious as spinach you pick in your own garden. No work. It's whistle clean, all washed and trimmed for you. And it's thrifty, too, because there's no waste. One box serves four people. So get tender, luscious bird's eye spinach tomorrow. But be sure it's bird's eye. Remember... It can't be the same if it ain't got that name. Get bird's eye, bird's eye frosted food. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.